What is up guys? We're back with another video and today I just wanted to talk about Gen 5 storage and go over our first Gen 5 drive that we're going to be reviewing, which is the Crucial T700. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what do I mean when I say Gen 5 storage? That of course means PCI Express 5.0. The previous generation is Gen 4 or PCI Express 4.0. And that really maxed out around 7.87 gigabytes a second, which is still extremely, extremely fast. Now with PCI Express 5.0 or Gen 5, you're going to max out at about 15.75 gigabytes a second, which is just insane. Now, of course, all of the drives that are going to be coming out won't max out at that speed. Some will, some won't. Um, but that is the max speed that you are going to get with Gen 5 storage. The Crucial T700 is available in three different sizes off the bat. So you're going to get one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte versions. You're also going to get a heatsink and non heatsink version. So the non heatsink version is just your plain 80 millimeter, you know, M.2 drive. There's no extra cooling on this or anything like that. So you will need to provide either, you know, the M.2 heatsink that comes on your motherboard or just another type of M.2 heatsink. This will overheat if you don't have anything on it. And this drive is double-sided too. So you have chips on the other side. So because it's double-sided and because of the heat restrictions, you won't be able to put this in a PlayStation 5. Now the heatsink version, of course, includes the heatsink here. So the heatsink is aluminum as well as nickel plated copper. It is a very nice design, really designed for air to flow over the drive itself at its max height. It is 20.5 millimeters, so just keep that in mind. Now, there is no active cooling fan on this, so no fan or anything like that. Just a nice, simple design here. Under the hood, you're going to find Fizon's brand new E26 controller. Micron's 232 layer 3D TLC NAND and a DRAM chip. Now the Fizon E26 is going to be sort of like the industry standard on this first round of Gen 5 drives. Now, before we get into testing, I did want to talk about temperatures and overheating. So, you know, a lot of these Gen 5 drives that we've seen, they all come, most of them come with like an active cooling solution, right? They have a fan on the heat sink or something like that, right? We've seen very large heat sinks as well as active cooling fans. In the Crucial Drive, as you can see, the heat sink is not all that big. And again, we don't have any active cooling fans. So I was a bit surprised, but I went ahead and installed the drive and our test system is a test bench, right? It is a PC test bench with no fans, you know, blowing air over the drive or anything like that. But I went ahead and just ran it and, you know, one of my first tests, which is Auto Disk Benchmark, it went ahead and it throttled, um, which is not something we typically see, you know. So the drive throttled on that and a couple of the other tests, it throttled as well. So, you know, I went and looked at the temperatures and the temperatures were quite, quite high, um, 82 degrees Celsius, you know, during the Auto Disk Benchmark test, which is very, very high. So I was like, okay. You know, let me run the non heat heatsink drive with an, you know, just the M.2 heatsink that comes with my, you know, with my motherboard, with my Z790 Tai Chi from ASRock. Did that. We were right around the same temperature and it throttled as well. Um, when we reviewed the Z790 Tai Chi, ASRock did send over their blazing M.2 heatsink. Um, this includes an active cooling fan and it's a pretty large heatsink. Even with this, the temperatures were pretty high. I'll go ahead and put the graph up on the screen so you guys can see. But even then, the temperatures were pretty high with this. Now, finally, I was like, okay, you know, let's see if I just put some put some air over this, right? Let me put some air over the, you know, the the one that has the heat sink and see what that does. So I just got a fan that I had laying around, put it on top of the uh, you know, just blowing air on top of the cooler here and the temperatures went down insanely. Like I said, you can see in the graph here that the temperatures went down and we didn't have any overheating or throttling issues. So I think if you're going to be running these drives, you know, either you need air flowing over the drive itself or you need something like this that does have an active fan on it. This heatsink 
does a good job only when there's air flowing over it. Like I said, our test system doesn't have air flowing over it. So that's just something you're definitely gonna have to keep in mind. Now we have the two terabyte versions of the drive. So they're rated for 12.4 gigabytes a second read and 11.8 gigabytes a second write. When it comes to testing, here's a full breakdown of our test system. Now we're gonna be showing you raw scores as well as comparisons against Gen 4 drives. As we come to the end here, I'm extremely happy that we finally have Gen 5 drives that are on the market now. We've been talking about Gen 5 drives for months now, and we finally have a handful that you can go ahead and pick up today, which is really awesome. Now, of course, with Gen 5 drives, you will need a new system that is going to support these. So you need a system that has a Gen 5, you know, M.2 slot or a Gen 5 expansion slot where you can put an expansion card that you know can support these drives so that's the newest platforms on both the amd and intel side now when it comes to speeds these drives will blow gen 4 out of the water of course this drive specifically as you saw in our test performed pretty much up to its rated speeds which is really really awesome and you know these drives this platform is going to get better over time just like we saw with the gen 3 and Gen 4, you know, the platform matures over time and things get better. Talking about things that can get better, or we hope get better is of course, temperatures, overheating, uh, throttling and things like that. We did experience throttling with both of these drives um, in a test bench with no air running over the drive. So like I said, if you are gonna be running these drives, you need some air flowing over these drives or they will overheat. So that's, you know, just something you definitely need to keep in mind if you're gonna be running a Gen 5 drive. But overall, I think Crucial has done a pretty good job on these drives. We will have links below where you can go ahead and pick these up, as well as a link to our full written review. Now, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.